You can kick off. Okay. Mommy, what is kick? Hello, beautiful children. Hello, teacher. It's being cut off. Adjust your camera a bit. Adjust camera also, my adjust camera. Better is, it okay? is it okay? Yeah. yeah, better now. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Welcome. I can see your faces are shining. Marvelous. Favor. Samuel. Your faces are shining. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Happy weekend. Hi. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Okay. So we're going to start right now. We're going to start with worship song. Then a word of prayer before we go into the message for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's be in the mood of worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you had done. Oh, you had done. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you had done. Oh, you had done. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything you had done. It's only you, Jesus, it's only you. It's only you, Jesus, it's only you, it's only you, it's only you. Jesus is only there is none like you Lord is only you Jesus is only there is none like you Lord is only you Jesus is only you is only you Jesus is only you Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We honor you. We appreciate your goodness, your reverence. We give you all the praise 
Honor, respect, regard, worship, adoration, and exaltation be ascribed unto your holy name forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for giving us life in the land of the living. We thank you for making it possible for us to see the brightness of today's very day. We thank you for making it possible for us to gather before your presence this day to listen to your word. Father, we thank you, we honor your name, we worship you. We adore you, we appreciate your goodness, we uplift your name on high. For you are the omnipotent and omniscience God. For beside you there is no other God and none to be every wish about. Father, may your name be highly exalted forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. King of kings and the Lord of the Lord, ancients of days, and important and science, God, the creator of heaven and earth. Father, you created the whole world and no one created you. Father, you are the creator of the universe. Father, you are the great I am that I am. We worship you, O Lord. Father, we, your children, have gathered before your presence this very moment to thank you, to glorify you, to honor you, to appreciate your goodness. Father, oh God, for whom you are, for you are the all of mission God. Be that praise, be that worship forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. King of kings and Lord of Lord, we thank you for the life of our parents. We thank you for the life of our relatives. We thank you for the life of our neighbors. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, our church members, our brethren, oh God, our classmates, our schoolmates, oh God, we thank you for their life. We worship you, oh God, for giving us life together in the land of the living. We thank you for whom you are. We thank you for you are God. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, O God, for healing the world of COVID-19. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, for we thank you for showing your supremacy over the, this pandemic, O God. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, what shall we say? And if we have no other thing to say than to raise our heads in worship unto your holy name, to give you every praise, to use our totality to reverence you. Father, for you are the all omniscient God. You are the omnipotent God. You are the omniscience God. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Everlasting King of Kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega. Father, we commit our brethren that have gathered this very, this very space, oh God, to listen to your word and to your hand. Father, we pray that you should give us hearing ears and understanding mind. Father, that we might, we might be hearers and doers of the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we commit those that are yet to join unto your hand. Those that are preparing to join, Father, we commit unto your hand. Father, oh Lord, hasten whatever, hasten their gadgets, hasten themselves, hasten their footsteps, oh God, that in no distant time we shall all be here in it from your table in the name of Jesus Christ. Ancient of days will give you every place forever and ever, for time in the media, for in Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to kick off right now. We're going to start right now. I want us to look at the topic. The topic we are looking at today is confidence. You are welcome. You are welcome, confidence. Yes, welcome. Mirabel, Mesoma. Mirabel, you are welcome. Confidence, you are welcome. Mirabel, you are welcome. Right now, we are going to start. We are looking at a topic, a topic that we captioned orderliness and important godly character. Orderliness and important godly character. What is orderliness? What is orderliness? When we talk about orderliness, what do we mean? I want us to make an attempt. I want us to make some make an attempt on what orderliness is before I start the message for today. What do you think orderliness is? When you ask favor, what is orderliness? What will you tell us? Integrity, when you ask what is orderliness, what will you tell us? Perfect. Uh, the house is open, the room is open. I want you all to contribute. Confidence, are you there? Yes, I can see your beautiful face. So you're going to tell us what orderliness is. But first of all, let us start with favor. I think favor is raising her hand. Yeah, my angel, tell us what, what is orderliness? Orderliness means to arrange things where they belong. 
Very good. Give yourself a sound clap. Nice. Nice. Arranging things where the words belong. Putting things where they belong. That is a very beautiful answer. Even when I've not explained, even when I've not tell us the dictionary meaning, she gave, she went straight to the point. Putting things where they belong. I love that. I'm impressed. Okay, integrity. Ambellinus means doing something the way it is supposed to be. It's doing something correctly. Very good. Orderliness means doing things correctly. Doing things the way it should be done. Very good answer. Very brave and intelligent answer. Okay, who else will help us before we continue? Confidence, do you have an answer? Okay, okay. Just listen to us. Putting things the way they belong, doing things the way it should be. That's very intelligent answer. Okay, let us look at the book of Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. The whole of Exodus 25 is our concern. From, one to, uh, from verse 1 to verse 40, it all talks about orderliness. But we're going to read 1 to 11. Can I read it? Okay, integrity. The Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to make an offering to me. Receive whatever offerings anyone wishes to give. These offerings are to be wishes to give. These offerings are to be gold, silver, and bronze. Fine, lean, blue, purple, and well wool. Cloth made of goat's hair, ram skin, dyed red, fine leather, acacia wood. Oil for the lambs, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet smelling incense. Carnelians and other jewels to of the high priest and in his breast piece. The people must take breast breastplate. The people must take a, a sacred tent for me so that I may live among them. Make it and all it and all its furnishing according to the plan that I will show you. Make a box out of acacia wood, 110 mm. centimeters long, 66 centimeters wide, and 66 centimeters high. Cover it with pure gold inside and out and put a gold border all around it. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. We have seen integrity have 11. Like I said, from Exodus chapter 25, chapter 25, from verse 1 to 11. So, I, like I said earlier, that our concern, everything about Exodus chapter 25 is our concern. We are going to be looking at some of them. We just stopped at 11 for now, but other ones that are concerning that are related to what we are sharing today, we will still look at them as time goes on. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, as we say, as we all know that our topic today is what is an important godly character. Orderliness. When you arrange things the way they are supposed to be. Right now, I am going to define it. So after defining, we now look at what our test has for us. Orderly, if we do, when we look at the dictionary definition, the dictionary definition of orderliness is that orderliness is a fact of having a regular, proper, and systematic arrangement. Orderliness is the fact of having a regular, proper, and systematic what? Arrangement. It also means doing things in a peaceful and diligent manner. Orderliness means doing things in a peaceful and 
diligent manner. You, 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 that fact of having a regular, regular means routine. This is the way it is being done. You do it the way it should be done. Praise God. Amen. Proper, proper means the, the truth about what you are doing. And systematic, systematic shows us that it takes a particular word sequence and you have to follow that uh, sequence in order to be uh, orderly. In order to make that arrangement to be orderly, you have to follow a particular or a directed uh, sequence. Praise the Lord. Amen. Orderliness is the act of making sure everything is done correctly. It is characterized by observance of law, orderliness is characterized by what? Observance of law. When everything is done correctly, that is what orderliness. Praise God. Amen. You are asked to wash your plates. You are asked to wash plates. There is a procedure that requires washing of plates. What is that procedure? First of all, you remove the food remains on the plate. Secondly, you rinse the plate of the food remains. Thirdly, you use soap to wash the plate. After using soap to wash the plate, you give the first rinse and then the second rinse. After rinsing the second, after giving the second rinse, you now wipe the plate with a clean towel. After wiping the plate with a clean towel, you now arrange the plate in the shelf where it is supposed to be. Praise God. Amen. That is orderliness in keeping of the plate. Orderliness in tidying up of plates. We have orderliness in other things we do. We will look at them gradually. Praise God. Amen. But if you did not follow this order, you have to follow this order. If you take it, let's say, for instance, you have been given plates to wash, and you went to sweat with all those food remains in that plate, you dip them inside the water, rinse it. After rinsing, you start cleaning them and then keeping them where in, in the in the plate shelf. Is that orderliness? No. Is that an order of putting the plate? No, no it is not. Praise God. Amen. So we should do things orderly. It is characterized by observance of law. In the house, mom and dad are the owner of the house and they made a particular law. What law did they make? Maybe the law that will guide every day. Any day that we wake up from sleep, the first thing we do is to say our prayers. After saying our prayers, then you go straight and then brush your teeth. After brushing your teeth, then you sweep the house. After sweeping the house, that is when you are now free to start looking for food to eat as regarding breakfast. That is orderliness in the home. You don't wake up immediately from the bed and then go to the pot and start eating from the pot. It is not what a mark of orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. So orderliness have to do with what observance of law. Praise the Lord. So let us go back to our text where we read. We read the book of Exodus 25 from verse 1 to 11, where God gave Moses a commandment. He gave him an order on what to do. That order he gave him has to do with what? Building a sanctuary, building a day, tabernacle. Praise the Lord. The, the Bible said in the book of Exodus 25, verse 1, it said, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. The Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. Amen. He now gave some ordinances. He gave some commandments that should be given to the children of Israel, which includes the following. Speak to the children of Israel. <coughs> that they bring me an offering. That they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering, praise the Lord. On Sunday morning, tomorrow is Sunday, isn't it? Yes. Yes, tomorrow is Sunday. What is the confidence? 
Is it the network? Mirabel, I can't see you. Is it the network? So sorry about that. So the commandment was given to, for them to give what willingly. And the Lord, is going, the Lord said that everybody should give. But the one he is going to accept are those people that gave from their heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow is Sunday. We will all be going to church with our parents. And on going to church, we'll be giving, we'll be giving. An offering that will that we will give in the church. When as children we are supposed to take that offering wholeheartedly, we are supposed to do what take that offering wholeheartedly and accept it. On getting to the church, we focus on worship, praise and worship. When the praise and worship time is over, the pastor or the priest starts preaching. We should be keen and then listen to what God is telling us today priest, through the pastor, praise the Lord. Just the way God told Moses this day to tell the children of Israel, we are the children of Israel, we are the Israelites of today, and we should do what, listen to what the priest or the pastor is telling us in the church, praise the living God. Mm -hmm. So as we listen, when the word of God is done, we were done with the, when the pastor has finished preaching and we're asked to give our offering, we should not take that money home we should give it the way we were instructed. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the people are, when the church, your church members are going to give their offering, you go and then offer that that you have with a willing heart, because that is the one that God is going to accept. Not when you are in the church, you will collect that offering. Oh, this money is too big. How come mom gave me all these hundred shillings for, for offering? It is too much. Let me go and buy biscuit. You buy biscuit for 20 shillings, the, uh, the other ones are remaining. You now said, okay, God, God, giving you 80 shillings is not too big. Let me give you 20. Please, we should not be like that. We should give whatever thing we have forward heartedly. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So, so God was telling Moses to tell the people of Israel that this offering that they are giving should be what that they everybody should give whatever thing you have gold silver bronze be, be the color might be purple blue be it scarlet lead scarlet thread fine linen gold hair whatever you have you have to do what you give now let us look at the commandment the commandment which is that a uh, order that was given to god to the israelite through moses he said and let them make me a sanctuary. God said, let them make me what? A sanctuary that I may dwell among them. He wants to dwell among his people. God wants to dwell among the people of Israel. So he demanded that he should be built a sanctuary. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings. So you may... He told Moses to make the tabernacle and then furnish, to make the sanctuary and then furnish it just like the tabernacle. Praise the living God. Amen. What is the verse? Hello? What is the verse? The verse, where we are reading, we are reading the book of Exodus 25. We read from verse 1 to 11, but we will... We will look at others. Have I answered your question? Okay, let's continue. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. Praise the Lord. He was God was not telling them the things that they need to use to make that uh, tabernacle. That is the order now. Praise the Lord. Amen. God told them to make a sanctuary, then to make an ark of acacia wood. Overlay with pure gold. After making that ark of acacia wood, you should overlay it. They should overlay it with pure wood gold. In this present day generation, where we are going to see such tabernacle is in the Catholic Church. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see the way the Catholics built their church. Mm -hmm. They build it very big, and then you, you go inside, you see the sanctuary, and then all the chapel and all the other decorations that were made. 
The Lord also said to Moses, he says, you shall cast four rings of gold for the sanctuary and put them in four corners of the ark. When you make an ark, after making an ark, then cast a gold. How do you cast a gold? You make a gold. After allowing the gold to pass through finance, and it is now pure like gold, you now cast it, you mold it into what? Into rings. And then those rings should be found in the four corners of the ark. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when those rings are put in the four corners of the ark, he will he now told Moses to make an, a wood of or a pole of acacia again. This pole will now be, will be put inside those rings. In other words, he wants a pillar. Praise the living God. Amen. So when these goals are overlaid, he said, make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. The pole shall be in the rings of the ark. That ark is the is that ark is what we call the word sanctuary. Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. The pole shall be in the rings of the ark. You shall put into the ark the testimony which I will give. You. After putting the pole, you make the ark. Then after making the ark, God said he is going to give Moses a testimony. Maybe, uh, maybe the, the commandment now, the book that contains the law now, to now give him the book that contains the law, which he is going to place inside that word sanctuary, inside the ark. So when he places it inside the ark, he shall make a mercy seat of your gold, a messy seat. He is going to make a seat. Praise the living God. Amen. He is going to make what? A seat. That seat is called what? A messy seat. And it will be made with what? Pure gold. So that messy seat, let us see what the Bible is telling us. We shall make two cherubim, two cherubim of gold, to stand at the two ends of the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, at your own uh, leisure, when you are free, you can go through the book of Exodus 25 from verse 1 to 40. You will see the way God has systematically analyzed these ordinances, these orders, in an orderly way that Moses should carry them out. So when the mercy seat is made, at the end of the mercy seat, there should be a cherub. a cherub. A cherub is the image of an angel. The two images will be facing each other with their wings wide there open. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God is, was telling Moses that when their wings are wide open, stretch out to cover the mercy seat, that he shall now put, uh, put the mercy, uh, mercy seat on top of the ark. Praise the Lord. Amen. The cherub shall face each other and then stretch out their wings to cover the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. So when he now come in order to talk to Moses, he will now sit on top of that uh, mercy seat because it is now on top of the ark. Praise the living God. Mm -hmm. So this is the commandment that, uh, or the orders which God gave unto Moses that he will abide by it. He, bro he broke everything down systematically. He first of all said that he's going to make a sanctuary. He told him the kind of wood that he's going to use. He also told him the kind of metal that it should be made of a gold. Praise the Lord. The rings, he's going to put three pillars of what acacia wood. Praise the living God. Amen. So at the end, Moses came down. Let us look at Verse 22. 22 is also our concern. 20 to 22, that is also our concern. Let us look at it. I'm going to read. Okay, favor read for us. Exodus 25, 20. Are you there? I want to read. Okay, favor. Yes, I'm there. Verse 20. Yes. Okay. It says. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. 
Okay, read, read 22, read 21 and 22. Okay, you shall put the messy seat on top, on top of, of, of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you, and there, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see the way God highlighted what he wanted Moses to do. Building the tabernacle, making of the mercy seat, molding the two cherubs the way they are going to be. Okay. He also said that he also told Moses how he is going to make another tabernacle in front of that one. When he makes that tabernacle, he's going to make it to be strong with concrete materials like the acacia tree, the gold, the way the other one was. Then after making that one, in that place he will be sitting to receive instructions from God. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is going to sit on the second one he made. When he sits on it, he will now be receiving instruction from God when God will now come down to the one he built there previously. Praise the Lord. Amen. He told Moses, he told Moses that he shall, you shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. Lampstand. You will see this type of, this lampstand in the Catholic church. Lampstand of pure gold. In that lampstand, they're going to light it whenever they are coming for fellowship. They're from there, they are going to be seen everywhere. Praise the Lord. Amen. Its branches, its bower, its ornament, knob, and flower shall be of one piece. And six branches shall come out of the side, three branches of the lampstand in one side. Praise the Lord. Amen. Finally, he told God told Moses, You shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall arrange it, its lamp. I, I'm, I'm reading 37, Exodus 25, 37. Let us listen. You shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall arrange its lamps so that they give light in front of it. That lamp will give light in the sanctuary during fellowship. Praise the Lord. And its yeah. weak trimmer and their tray shall be of pure gold. You see the, the instruction God is given, the ordinances, the orders now. He wants, as he is giving those orders to Moses, he wants those orders to be done as he had said. Everything should be made of what? Pure gold. Every wooden, every wood should be made of what acacia, and all the metal should be of what pure gold. It shall be made of a type of a talent of pure gold with all these utensils, and see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. I want to ask us a question from what we have read, the way God gave these ordinances, I want to ask us the question. How detailed was God while talking to Moses? When God was talking to Moses, how detailed was he? I'm asking a question. Everybody, everyone is free to answer. What was how, the question? How did God explain what he wanted Moses to do. That is, what, that is the meaning of the question. How detailed was God? Okay, favor. God instructed Moses what to do with order. With order, praise God. God instructed Moses, gave Moses an order. Praise the Lord. And that is that uh, orderliness. Okay, confidence, you are raising your hand. Tell us. Yeah. 
he explained how many layers that you should put. Come again, pardon. He explained how many layers of of it you should put. How many layers of? Come again, confidence. You said he explained how many layers. I want to get your the, the exact word you used. Go. Praise the Lord. He explained how many layers of gold he wanted Moses to use. Praise the Lord. Confidence answered really right. He explained in details the layers of gold. He, God told Moses that he wants the sanctuary, the sanctuary back, the, the, the fence, let's put it like that right now, to be made of what? Gold. The cast to be made of gold. The rings to be made of gold. Praise the Lord. He detailed, in details, he explained the layers that he wants to be made of gold. Very good. Confident. Thanks. Thank you for that intelligent answer. Okay, integrity, tell us. Oh, Mirabel. Mirabel, you want to say something? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. Eh? God told Moses to put a massive seat on, on top of the ark. Okay, good. God told Moses to put the mercy seat on top of the ark. Very good. You are keen. You are listening. That is one of the words orders. That is one of the details he, in which God told the Moses. Praise the Lord. Integrity, help us. How detailed was God while talking to Moses? God, God was talking to Moses the, uh, in a category, in a way that he should, he should do it. He was, he was giving him steps on how to make the, the sanctuary that they will be worshiping him. He gave, he gave him steps that he would follow to build the, the, the sanctuary. Example, like the one of the, of the angels where the where the wings were 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 open wide and the angels were bowing. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. He, 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 you answered very very correctly. God gave the instruction in details. Praise the Lord. The other was what direct. The way he should do what make everything regarding the building of the sanctuary. Praise the link being God. Mm -hmm. You all answered very, very correctly. Okay, let us look at another question. How did God want Moses to carry out his orders? Mm -hmm. How did God want Moses to carry out his orders? Because God wanted... Come again. Mirabel. God wanted Moses to carry out the word the other the way he wanted very good give him give her a sound clap yes thank you for that intelligent answer god wanted moses to carry out the others the way he wanted i'm impressed i'm impressed this class is this class in fact god is taking us somewhere in this class i'm impressed thank you so much mirabel God wants Moses to carry out the orders the way he has it instructed. Praise the Lord. Okay, perfect wants to say something. Perfect. Yes, perfect. How God? How did God want Moses to carry out his orders? How how God wanted Moses to carry out his orders is by when God told Moses to 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 build everything to build so that all the irons will be made out of gold. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prophet have answered very, very correctly. I am very happy with this eh, class. 
God, he said God wanted Moses to tell the Israelites exactly what he had said by doing what? By telling him to make the, all the metal parts to be made of uh, pure gold, not fake gold. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sister. Marvelous. Marvelous, tell us. A total obedience. Come again. In total obedience. In total obedience. Very good. In total obedience. Thank you so, so much, my beautiful daughter. In total what? Obedience. God wants Moses to carry out these orders in total obedience. Thank you so much. I'm very impressed. In fact, you have given me the courage to continue. Thank you so much. I can see more people joining us from Mirabel. More people have joined us from Mirabel. You are all welcome. You are welcome to this wonderful gathering. You are very much welcome. Okay. We have another question. Do you, how detailed are you when you are given an assignment or a job to do? How detailed are you when you are given an assignment? Maybe an assignment to do in school, the way your teachers give you an assignment to do in the school. How detailed are you? Or is the house? Percent. Hundred percent. <laughs> very, very correct. Hundred percent. You are expected to do it hundred percent. When you are giving the details and you are, if you did not understand, you can ask questions. Mom, what did you say again? You said I should buy tomatoes. You gave me 1,000 shillings. Tomatoes for how much? Okay, you have to buy tomatoes for 200 shillings and then keep 800 shillings for me. If you did not understand what mom said, please ask what questions. Mom, how much did you say I should spend on tomatoes? 200 shillings. You are okay. If you think you will forget, you are very free to go and write it down. Tomatoes, 200 shillings. Balance, 800 shillings. Then when mom comes back, you show her, this is the tomatoes for 200 shillings and this is the balance for what? 800 shillings. That makes you a good word, child. That makes you, that shows that you have that orderliness as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, but when you are not... Uh, when you did not understand what mom told you, you have to ask what questions so that you understand properly. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the school, in the school, you are given an assignment to do in the school. How do you carry out the assignment? How do you carry out the assignment you are given to do in the school? You have to do it the way the teacher wanted you to do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have been taught in class, maybe mathematics or English language, or even other subjects like agriculture, home science. What else? What other subjects do we do in, in primary school? Okay. Confidence. English. English, very good. Here we do Kiswahili. What other subject? Computer. Computer. Thank you Computer. so much, Mirabel. Thank you so much, Mirabel. Uh, hey, integrity, what other subject? French. Okay, we also do French language. Favor, what subject do you do? Catalan and Spanish. Spanish and what? Catalan. Catalan. Okay, yes. I don't know that one, but I know Spanish. Very good. So when you are given this subject as an assignment to go home and do them, the teacher must have taught you something in the class. And it is left for you to sit in an orderly manner, listen to him or her like someone that is from a home. Then when the assignment is given to you, you go home and then do exactly what you have been asked to do. Praise the Lord. Okay, French. Okay, confidence, French. I have had. Thank you so much for that answer. 
So you do exactly what you are told to do. That is what you have possessed that orderliness as a child of God. You have possessed that character of orderliness as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Amen. We, should exactly, we should do exactly what we are asked to do and not to follow what shortcuts. Following shortcuts does not pay. Praise the Lord. Amen. You might be given clothes to wash. In the clothes that you are supposed to wash, you have the socks, you have the underpants, you have the school uniform, you also have the white singlet or the white shirts, sweaters, and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. Here in Kenya, we're we are experiencing extreme cold. So we always wear sweater and then jacket. So this time around, it is not easy to wash, but God is our strength. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when you are given all these clothes to wash, as an orderly child of God, as a, as a child of God who possesses orderliness as a character or as a virtue, what do you do? You start sorting. You arrange them first of all. You sort the socks differently. You don't put all, gather all those clothes and then put them in the basin, pour water, pour omo, and then begin to wash it like that. No. Praise the living God. Amen. What you need to do is to do what you sort those uh, clothes. You put the socks different, the underpants different, the white, the white singlet, white shirts. You put them, keep them what different, the sweaters different, and then the jacket different. Praise the Lord. Then when you sort them like that, the first one you should wash is the white clothing. Praise the Lord. So that those colored ones will not, their, their color will not, uh, uh, will not spoil the color of the white word clothes. Praise the Lord. So you first of all soak the white ones, wash them. After washing them, you now pick the other ones according to their word, the level at which they are dirty. Then you wash. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is what we call what? Orderliness. But when, we, when you put all together to wash it at the same time, you are following a short cut. And that shortcut will lead you to no way. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. How does it give God glory when we are orderly? How does it give God glory when we are orderly? Do God take glory in orderliness? Yes. Okay. So how does yes. it give God glory when we are orderly? Yeah, in said we still have an answer. When we are orderly, yes. When we are orderly, when we are orderly, it gives God glory. Like, like if the if Moses did not follow uh, God's rules, he will the command that he gave me to follow. If he did not do it in order, he would have he would have used the shortcut, and and shortcuts are always bad. So that is why that is that is why if you use things in the correct way, it gives God glory. Because when Moses finished building, he did it in or he did it in an orderly way, and it gave God the glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living God. You answered very correctly. When you give, when you do things in an orderly way, it really gives God glory. And he is telling, integrity is telling us today that it will give God glory because he will be happy that you did, that you followed what his instruction. The way Moses followed the instruction of God, he did it like verse 40 told us, and see to it that you make them according to the pattern which you, which was shown to you on the mountain. Praise the Lord. So it will give God what? glory and he will be happy yeah somebody was raising her hand someone was raising her hand about to tell us how it gives god's glory when we are me, mirabel. When we, oh mirabel okay when we are orderly 
Mm. We, we obeyed God's command. Yes. Very good. When we are orderly, we obey God's command. And God likes obedient children. And because God likes obedient children, he is happy when we are obedient. Thank you so much for that wonderful answer. Thank you so much. How does it give God glory when we are orderly? Perfect. How is how it gives God How it gives uh, God glory when we are orderly? Raise your voice. How does it give God glory when we are orderly? How it gives God glory when we are orderly is 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 like is like when you are when you are washing the unit when you are washing the utensils you 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 took all of them and put it in water at the time then then you didn't wash it with soap and water God 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 feel bad. Uh, God, God doesn't like people who take shortcuts. Uh, and when, but when you do, when, but when you do it slowly, when you use soap and water to wash it, then you rinse it, clean it, then you put it in where it's supposed to be. God, God will be happy. Okay. So, in a, in summary, perfect is telling us that doing things in orderly manner shows what total obedience just like what mesoma mirabel told us that when you do it orderly it is what obedience and god delights in obedient children when you are obedient god delights in you praise the lord so we should try to abide by god's word instruction we should be what we should be observant of law because that is what that is one of the characteristics of what orderliness excuse me when you are orderly you abide by law right now in kenya when it is 10 pm no it the order says the law says nobody should be seen on the road that is part of the lockdown restrictions praise the lord Amen. So yeah, so it, there is still rest, lock, COVID lockdown restrictions in Kenya. It is still working. So that is the order now. Once it is 10 p.m., no one should be seen what outside. As a child of God, we need to heed to those uh, orders because the Bible says that we should obey the authorities. Those people in authority, we should obey them. Praise the Lord. So when these orders are given by the state government, by the community, by your parents, we should do what? We should hack into those laws and abide by them. So being observant of law and being law abiding makes us what? A good orderly child of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Another characteristic of orderliness is being well behaved. Anyone that is orderly is a person that is well what behaved. You and your parents, you went, you, you went to church or you went for a meeting. You have to do what? You have to sit in what? In a position that you are supposed to sit. You sit like a child of God. You have your Bible. You read it there. You have your storybook or your novel. You read, sit in one place and then you read. Not when you go to church. You have been assigned to sit on where the children are supposed to sit. You said, eh. Hey, I'm not a child. I will not sit here. You stand up. On standing up, you just walk, walk, walk up to the place, up to the chorister seat. When you get to the chorister seat, you sit with the choristers. You get up from the chorister seat again. You go to the women fellowship and sit with the women. You get up from that seat again. You go to the men fellowship and sit with the men. You get up from the men fellowship. You are just walking around the church. That is not an orderly attitude. When you portray that attitude, you are not an orderly child, you are not, uh, you, are, you don't possess that orderly character, that character of orderliness. Praise the living God. Amen. So we should do what we should be what? Disciplined and well behaved. A well behaved and a disciplined child is a child that is what? That possess that quality of 
orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Which those things, those values that we are getting from the word that we are listening when we are, we are that we are getting when we are listening to our teachers we get them when we listen to the pastors we get them when we listen to our parents when our parents start admonishing us trying to make good human beings out of us those instructions they give us we should abide by them we should listen to them when we apply them in our daily life we we that is when we are seen as disciplined world children praise the living god that's when we are seen as disciplined and well-behaved children. You see an elder, you greet the elder. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Praise the Lord. When somebody gives you something, whether you have, whether you want that thing or not, just say thank you. Praise the Lord. That is part of what orderliness. You, you thank you, please. I don't want. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, somebody comes to your house, you see that this person is a familiar person, your, your parents have been have asked you to open the door. Oh, welcome. Praise, praise the living God. Amen. So you need to possess this world values, these characters in you. That is what makes you a disciplined and well-behaved child. You don't talk when the elders are talking. You don't talk when your parents are talking. When you, are, when you made a mistake in the house, your parents are correcting you. You just keep quiet and do what? Listen to them. Do not talk when they are talking. That is what makes you a well-behaved world child. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your mother, Amen. your mother is telling you what you should do. Do not focus your eyes on the television. You can pause whatever program you are watching and then listen to her. Your father is giving you an instruction. You can pause the program in the television and listen to him. After listening to him, you are done receiving the instruction you are being given. What do you do? You go back to what you were doing. That is what makes you what? Disciplined and well behaved. And being disciplined and well behaved are what? Characteristics of orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to look at the areas that we apply orderliness in our daily life. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Okay, favor my dear, read for us. I say, he says, let all, let all things be done decently and in order. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. You come back from school. You come back, excuse me, you come back from school. You come inside the compound. You don't need to step inside the house with your school sandal. Praise the Lord. Amen. What do you do? You remove your school sandal, clean them immediately, and then put them where they are supposed to be to maintain the decency of that house. Praise the living God. Let all things be done decently and in order. Being decent. When you, when you look decent or you behave decently, that is what orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Practical application of orderliness in our lives. How do you apply orderliness practically? How do you practicalize orderliness in your house, in your life? For you to live an orderly life, what are there are things you need to do for you to do what to live an orderly life? One is what to set priorities. One is what to set priorities. I'm going to ask question on this, so let us listen attentively. Um, we are talking about practical applications of orderliness in our lives. That is to say, the processes or the things you do that needs orderliness in your life. One is to what set priorities. 
how do you set priorities? You prioritize when you have a lot of things that are facing you. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, pri you prioritize. This is number one. The most important is set them in order of importance. Setting priorities is arranging your needs or your work in order of importance. Praise the living God. Amen. Right now you are Amen. back from school. You have a lot of things to do. You have a program to watch. Here, there is a program we watch that is called Maria. Praise the living God. Amen. There, there is the one that integrity likes watching. He said, he called, it's an Indian movie anyway. It's an Indian movie. He said it's called Ashoka. Whenever he comes up from school, he has his assignments to do. He needs to eat food. He has Ashoka to watch. He needs to take his bath. Praise the Lord. And then he needs to do his duty because every day has its, every child in, a, in this house, in my home, has a duty to do when you are back from school. I know it is also applicable in your house. Maybe you are back from school, Favor should wash the plate, Marvella should sweep the house. In my house, when the, my children are back from school, Integrity should sweep the house, Perfect will wash the plate. So when you are back from school, you have, you have to eat food to eat. You need to watch a particular program in the television. You need to do your homework. And then that one house chore that you need you, that you are supposed to do for that day. Four things are what facing you. What are you supposed to do? You set what priorities. How do you set priorities? You, you organize them in order of importance. Which one is the most important for, important for you? Are you going to watch television and then leave your, your homework? Or do your homework and leave a shocker? Or do take a shock? You understand? You know what to do now. You prioritize. You set them in order of what? Importance. Praise the Lord. But as a good student, as a good, as an orderly child of God, what do you think you need to do? Watch that program in the television. Eat. Do your homework. Or do that is your homework from school now, or you do that your house job. These four things, what are you going to do first? Okay, marvelous. Marvelous. Can marvelous. You, can you say the thing that you said before? Marvelous. Oh, okay. I am saying. We are talking about practical application of orderliness in our life. What are the things you do in order to do what? Apply mm, orderliness in our life. One is to do what? To set priorities. In setting priorities, setting priorities means putting the things that you need to do in order of importance. Organizing the things you are supposed to do in order of importance. In order of importance means that the most important one, you label it number one. Second to important, you label it two. Third to important, you label it what? Three, and so on and so forth. You understand now? Yes. So we now have four things that you need to do when you are back from school. Because yes, the, the children come back from school, five. And within that five, till you go to bed around eight, you have these four things to do. Eating your food, doing your assignments from school, doing your house chores, and then watching the television program. Which one will you do first? Okay, marvelous. Do homework. Somebody said something. Who said it? Me, Mirabel. Oh, Mirabel. Mirabel said, do your homework. Marvelous. Is it true? Is it true? What will you do? To do your house choice. You do your house chores. Favor, is she correct? Okay, perfect. Tell us. 
Perfect, tell us. Do your homework. You should first do your homework. You should first do your homework. That is what you are supposed to do first. Integrity, tell us. You should first bath. Because your body will be dirty when you come back. Okay, perfect answered very well. Integrity, we have to be attentive. Perfect, answered very well. Mirabel also answered very, very well. So when you are back from school, you do your homework. That is first in the list. After your homework, you now eat your, you now go into other things according to your what priorities. Praise the Lord. Amen. You do your homework before watching television. Praise the living God. Amen. Then after doing your homework, you eat your food, watch television, and then before you go to bed. Because I, if you go to bed early, you wake up early the following day to go to school. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much for your answers. You guys are, are really keen and attentive. Yes, I am. So still on the order of priorities, you have food to eat. You have food that is there in front of you. Do you go ahead with eating that food or you wash your hand before eating the food? We are talking about orderliness now. Systematic, the systematic way of doing things correctly. You have food in front of you. Do you go ahead eating that food or you wash your hand before eating the food? What do you do? Eat okay. the food first. Integrity. Wash your hands. Okay, you answered very well. You wash your hands before eating the food because your health is what first. You take care of your health before you take care of your appetite. Wash your hands before you eat your food. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. You guys are, you are the real... MVPs. Okay, we have state standards. One of the practical application of orderliness in our lives is what you set what standards. How do you set standards? Standard of good character. For you to maintain orderliness in your life, you have to set standard of good character. Praise the Lord. Standard of good character is let people know you with a particular thing. Oh, I love marvelous. Marvelous don't take things from people. You give her cake, she says, oh, thank you, thank you. I don't want, thank you. Praise the Lord. That is her character. Praise the living God. That is the standard that she has set for herself. She is what discipline. She doesn't eat from people. She doesn't eat out. She only eats the one that mom gives her. You set what standard? You, the standard you are going to set is you, you, you also set it in the school, not because mommy is there or mommy's friend is there in the church. They will tell mommy that you have taken something from somebody. Also set that same standard at the school. In the church, in the school, in the community, you are known for what? Not collecting things from people and eating anyhow. Praise the living God. Amen. That is what the standard that you have uh, said. What other standard of good characters do we know? What other standard of good character should we set as an orderly Christian? I've told us one. That one is what? The character of marvelous. Marvelous doesn't collect things from people. Give her sweet, she will tell you, oh, thank you, I don't want. Give her cake, she tells you, oh, thank you, I don't want. Give her biscuits. She said, oh, thank you. I don't want. So what other characters should we do what possess as orderly children of God? Pray every day. Praise the Lord. We should pray every day. We should pray every day. It is an orderly character. This is a, it is a godly character. It is an, a character of orderliness, praying every day. Okay, let, let that young man tell us something. Samuel. 
Very good. We were, give him a thumb clap. We should say the truth at all times. It is what a godly character. It is a character of orderliness, saying the truth. Let people know you that you say the truth. That is your standard. Saying the truth at all times. When something happened in the class, the teacher will say, oh, Samuel says the truth at all times. Let us call him. He will tell us what eh, happened. And once you call him, he will tell you the truth. That is what the standard. You do what you said, standard. Thank you so much for that wonderful answer. Another person? OK, perfect. Good habit. Like? You should not talk when your father is talking Very or good. your mother. Do not talk when elders are talking. A good habit. Do not talk. We, we all know perfect. Perfect is a quiet girl. When anybody is talking, the parents are giving her word of admonition or instruction. She doesn't talk. She listens. That is the character we should what possess. That is the standard of good character that we should do what possess as an orderly child of God or a child of God that possesses the character of orderliness. We should not talk when people, when our elders are talking. Praise the Lord. Okay. Confidence, you have something to tell us. I'm sure you have something to tell us. Okay. Integrity. We should not steal. Very good. Another character of orderliness, another godly character is we should not what? Steal. We should not steal. We should be content with what we have. It's just like what we studied last week. Being content with what we'll have. The person that steal or takes what doesn't belong to him or her is what is <coughs> is has possessed a habit that is not what a having as children of God. Praise the Lord. So setting standards in the home, at home, let us be known for a particular good eh, character. Somebody wants to tell us something. Marvelous, you're raising your hand. We should not lie. Very good. Like what Samuel said, always tell the truth. We should not lie. Thank you very, very much. We have another practical application of orderliness in our life. Get organized. Being what? Organized. When you are organized, how do you organize? How, how, do, you, how do you know someone that is what? Organized. Let us see. Make a place for everything and keep them in their place. That is what shows that you are what? Organized. Not when one comes to your house. The shoes are inside your bags of clothes. That is not what shows that you are what? Organized. When you come to the kitchen, you have, you put your, the plate for soup, the plate for, for eba or swallow or fufu. You put the plate for soup, the spoon, the fork, everything inside one place. That doesn't show that the person is well, the home is well organized. When you organize, when you are organized, when you organize yourself, you do what you make a place for everything and keep them in their rightful places. You have a place for your shoes, you have a place for your dresses, you have a place for your undies, you have a place for your socks you have a place for other things. Do not mix them up. That is what shows that you are what organized. When someone comes to your room, your room will look so decent. Praise the Lord. Amen. In my house, we have bags different. We have bags different from that of the clothes wear. The, the, the clothes for home wear, they have their separate bags. 
for church wear, it has a separate bag. For school uniform, also have their separate uh, bag. So the way our parents organize things in the house, we should also look at them. As we look at them, we all we grow with them. When we live in our in our own homes, when we are grown, we continue with that very good uh, character of orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you keep things organized, you can easily find what you need or pass surprise inspection. Praise the living God. Amen. In this case, when you keep your things, when you keep things where they are supposed to be, it shows that you are what organized. And when you have a surprise visitor, somebody visits you by surprise, not and when you hear a knock in the door, go and check, go and check who is that person there. When you look at, oh, it is daddy that is coming. Go and wash the toilet. Go and put those, put away those plates, those plates that we have used in eating that which we hid under the table. Bring it out. Go and put it in the washing basin. Those your school uniform that you have mixed together with the dirty socks, sort them now. Put them where they are supposed to be before you open the door. Do, 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 do fast, do fast. No, it shouldn't be so. We should organize ourselves. We should put things the way they are supposed to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes if we, if we are not organized, an inspection may come up suddenly. And we fail the inspection. Praise the living God. Amen. Like, I'm not supposed to tell us this, but, I, but this teaching have made me, will make me to say, when I was, when we were still in Nigeria, I was teaching. I was teaching secondary school. So we normally have what we used to write. It is called a diary. We have, we, we write diary. The diary is the record where we put down all the scheme of work that we teach. We have the register. We also have the note of a lessons. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there are some teachers that, that do not write their, they write their note of lessons, but, they do not write their diary. They do not work their registers. The registers is the roll call for children. We call them the, the answer, you understand? Favor Emmanuel, present teacher. Marvelous Emmanuel, present teacher. Mirabelle Mesoma, present teacher. Confidence, present. you understand? That is the way we call. So when you call the answer, so after the after calling, you have to calculate. That is when you organize your register. Some teachers do not organize their register after, call, after taking attendance, they keep the registers. So a particular day came, an inspector came unannounced. You, when you see this man, you will never know that this man is an inspector. He just came. Can I, can I get your records? That was what he told the principal. The principal said, okay, okay, please. Call, please. He now sent words to the teacher to submit all their records. We never knew that there was an inspector that came to look at the school. So we all submitted our records, and many teachers did not tidy up their records. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that shows that some of those teachers are not worth organized. Those people that are able to tidy up their records are the ones that are worth organized. So they were able to pass that surprise word inspection. Praise the living God. Amen. So for instance, you are asked to, you are asked to always cut your nails before coming to school. On a very good day, the teacher, a, a, a teacher came. I am going to flog those who did not cut their fingernails. He just came out. He did not inform you the day before or even the, the previous day that today I am inspecting your nails. But those dirty students that did not cut their nails, they came to school that day with dirty nails and the teacher came in to the assembly ground. Immediately after the assembly, before you go to the class, please, I want to see your nails. Stretch up, stretch forth your hands. And you have no other choice than to do what you see some of them hiding behind others, trying to use their teeth to cut their nails. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we should be organized at all times. If your hair is not tidy, you do what? You remove, you undo the old ones and make new ones. Praise the Lord. If your nails are getting long, Please cut them short. It is also a mark of what cleanliness. Praise the Lord. When you are clean, you eat with clean hands, you will remain healthy. But when your fingers are dirty, that is why the, the teachers flog you when your fingers are what long. These are all aspects of what organizing yourself. Make sure your school socks are not smelling. Wash your socks, wash your undies, 
cut your fingernails, make your hair. If you cannot make them, bath them. It is very okay. Praise the living God. Amen. These are all aspects of what being organized. When we are organized, we do what we possess the character of what orderliness. Praise the living God. So the last one we are now going to look at is what put away, write away. Put away, write away. Let's say it together. Put, put away, away write, write away. Put away. Put, put away, away, right away. Praise put the Lord. Away, right away, right away. So how do you put away, right away? You are back from church. As soon as everybody is, tomorrow is church, I want us to put away, right away tomorrow. Immediately you are back from church. The shoes which you went to church with, as soon as you are removing them, you are cleaning them and then keeping them where they are supposed to be. Not when you come back from church, you leave your shoes there. You go to school the following day, you come back from school, the shoes that you, you, that you came back from school with, you leave them there to, to. For one week, the shoes that you have worn for one week, you have packed them somewhere. You did not clean them, you did not organize them, you did not put them away. That is not a character of what orderliness. When you will come back from church, the shoes that you came back from church with, you clean them immediately and then keep them where they are supposed to be. Praise the Lord. That's what you mean by what put away, right? Away. Your, your mom has served you food. You are now eating your food. As soon as you finish eating your food, remove the plate. Don't wait for mom to tell you, hey, perfect. Who leave that plate there? Who used that place to eat? Don't tell, don't wait for mom to tell you that. As soon as you finish eating, take your plate to the, to the sink. Don't leave it where you ate. When you take it to the sink, don't leave it there. Wash all the utensils that are there in the sink. Put away right away. Do not allow them to pile up. Praise the living God. Because when you allow them to pile up, you will look at, come and you will, when you are now ready to wash them. In fact, on seeing the height of those plates, you'll be tired of what? Washing. So do not allow them to do what? To pile up. You, 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 the whole family have finished taking breakfast. Though, if you know it is your duty to wash the plate, wash it right away. It, you, when, when everyone ha is awake, woke up in the morning, you know it is your duty to sweep the house. Please sweep it right away. Praise the Lord. Away. So we also have, you have your books. After reading your books, or maybe at the course of reading, you have not covered the pages you want to cover and you are feeling what sleepy. Take those books and keep them appropriately. Do not sleep on top of the books like this. It is not an orderly manner. Praise the Lord. When you are when you are reading, you are reading, you have you have a particular page that you want to get to, and you have not reached there, you are tired. Please. Pack your books, keep them, sleep. When you are awake, you continue from where you stop. Do not sleep on top of your books. Okay. Like we, well, like we said, like we said, when we started, we were talking about what orderliness. Orderliness as an important godly character. So we look at the definition, we look at our tests, and then the practical application of orderliness in our lives, which includes set priorities, set standards, get organized, put away, right away. Let us see the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans. Confidence. I want you to read the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I'm there. What is the verse? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I 
Okay, if you are there, you are free to read. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is okay. that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is good and is pleasing to him and his purpose. Okay, okay, thank you so much, confidence. I'm so happy. Now, the Bible said in the book of Romans, like what she read, she said, do, the Bible said, do not conform yourself to the standard of this world, but let God do what transform you. Orderliness. In this, in this case of orderliness, in the world today, the world do not practice what? Orderliness. The world today do not practice orderliness. And when we conform ourselves to their standards, you see that we are out of the track. So we should not conform ourselves to the standard of the world. But let God transform us inwardly. On a, on, on, on a mm -hmm. with a, by a complete change of our mind, then we'll be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him, and that is the perfect one for us. Oh, praise the living God. Amen. So we should not do what? We should not conform ourselves to the standard of this eh, word. When we set standards, our standard should be what? That of the Bible. The Bible should be our standard. We shouldn't say, say, allow people to tell us what to do. The Bible is there to, in, to instruct us. The Bible is there to direct us. The word of God is there to tell us what we need to do as children of God to, have, to possess orderliness as a as an important godly character. So at this juncture, we're going to pray. We're going to, we're going to pray. But before we pray, I'm going to ask us a question. After that question, we are going to pray. After praying, we now, I don't know if teacher have a video for us. Teacher Joyce, do you have a video for us? Yes, she okay. has. Okay, okay. So we're going to take a question right now. After taking the question, then we will pray and then watch the video. Praise the living God. Amen. So the question is, what are the practical applications of orderliness in our life? What are the ways we should apply orderliness in our life? Mirabel. OK. Mirabel. We should do our homework when we come back from school before okay. we do our house. Very good. That is what said priorities. She's talking about setting priorities. You know, right now, she made mention of house chores, homework. She now told us that we should do our homework first before we do house chores and then other things we learn. Cool. One, you do what you set priorities. Setting priorities is a, is a practical application of orderliness in our life. Setting priorities. Thank you so much, Mirabel, for that wonderful answer. Okay, another answer. Practical application of orderliness in our lives. Okay, integrity, tell us. Another application of otherliness in our life is doing things on time. Doing things on time, that is get what, organized. 
get organized. Integrity tells us to get what organized. When you get, when you organize yourself, you do things what on time when you are supposed to do them. And when you get organized, when you organize yourself, when you do things when you are supposed to do them, you will pass surprise inspection. When people come to your house, you will not feel embarrassed. There are people today, when you visit them, they will, they will ask, yeah, why didn't you call me on phone before coming? That is because maybe the house is dirty or their toilet is dirty. Or sometimes you knock on their door, they open the door, oh, they start running about. Washing toilet, tidying up their bathroom. It is the, the home is not what organized. So we need to be what organized and there orderly at all times. Okay. Who is raising her hand? Favor. Favor, tell us something. To put away right away. Very good. Put away right away. Thank you so much for that wonderful answer. Put away right away. You have finished eating. Take the plate. Wash it immediately. Praise the living God. You came back from church. The shoes you wear to church, you clean them and then put them where they are supposed to be. The dresses, if they are dirty, they should be washed. You wash them immediately. Do not pile them up. Because when you pile them up, they will become so many, they start smelling. And then you will hate those dresses. Praise the living God. Put away right away. Thank you so much. <coughs> okay. Marvelous. Um, I want to say that <coughs> that anything that um That then, that um, when we come back, when we come back from from somewhere, we should put uh, all the dirty things that that we wear into the washing machine. Praise the Lord! Very nice, very very correct answer. The clothes that in machine. For those people that that have washing machine, praise the Lord. And then if you don't have washing machine, you have a place that your mother have set out where you keep your dirty things. Put them there. Praise the Lord. Then if you are able to wash, it is very, very okay for you to wash them immediately. Give her a sand clap. She answered very well. Perfect. Set standard. Okay. Set standards set standards it is what it is an, a way of applying orderliness in our daily life set standard let people know you with a particular godly character character of set, set, saying the truth like someone told us say the truth then mm, integrity told us that we should not what sin People should know you that this person cannot do this or this person can do this. Praise the Lord. May Prophet told us to have good word habits. When you have a good habit, a habit of not telling lies, a habit of not uh, uh, taking food or eatables from anybody, except that which your mom, mommy gives to you. That is what a standard, setting word standard. People knowing you with a particular character. Then finishing chores. When your parents tell you what to do, you start the, when you start a chore in the house, you, as you start it, you also finish it. Not when mom tells you, eh, Mirabel, you have, you have to wash these dresses, sir. Let me go to the market and come. He said, okay, mommy, you put the dresses in the basin, pour water on it, and then you go and start playing. Those dresses will be there oh, until your mom comes back from the market. Mirabel, why didn't you wash these dresses again? Oh, sorry, mom, I forgot. You now go went back and then start washing. By then, the sun has set. No sun to dry the dresses. Do you understand? Mm. So we should start chores and then finish them as soon as possible. That is what orderliness, living an orderly life. 
praise the living God. Amen. Children, I hope we learned something today. I hope we learned something today, children. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Me, me, Robert. Yes. Okay. So I want to I want you to tell us what you learned today. Me, me, Robert. Okay, Mirabu, tell me what you learned. I learned that we should put away right away. Very good. Thank you so, so much. Put away right away. Thank you. Another person, what, what did you learn today? Integrity, what did you learn? I learned that we should not close that things because when you close that things, when you, when you finally come uh, to wash it or, or put it, uh, where it's supposed to be, the the level of the things will be so high that you will immediately become tired and weak. Okay, praise the Lord. Integrity said his lesson today that we should not cluster jobs. We should not cluster things. You have your dirty clothes, wash it immediately. Dirty plates, wash it. Do not allow uh, dirty plates or waste to pile up. When it is time to take out the waste, do not allow mommy to tell you, take out the waste. If she did not tell you to take out the waste, the waste will remain there until another round. So we should always learn to put away things. Thank you so much. Okay, confidence. Confidence is raising her hand, my dear. I learned that you should give. We should give. Okay, thank you so, so much. Giving is a part of what orderliness. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you have things that are many in your possession, say for instance, you have story books that are so many that you have finished reading these story books, you have learned your moral lesson that you no longer need them. Do not allow them to occupy spaces in your shelf. Give it out. That is that is the the lesson confidence learns today. Give give out those story books, those novels. Praise the Lord. Do not allow them to occupy spaces in your shelf since you no longer need them. Try to give them out to other people so that they can read. Thank you so much, Confidence, for that wonderful lesson that you have learned today. Okay. Um, Favor. I learned that other, I learned two things. Okay. The first thing is that I learned that orderliness means to put things in order. Yes, very good. And the second thing is that when you see that things are scattered, you should not leave them down for your mommy and daddy to tell you to do it. You should do it immediately. Like very that, good. Your parents can be happy. Very, very good. I'm so, so much impressed. All of you have given me the given me the go ahead order to continue coming to this space. I'm very happy. She learned two things, and these two things are very very wonderful. When things are scattered all over in the house, please do yourself a favor. Do the home a favor to do what to put those things in order. When there is chores to be done and you know that you can do it, please do not allow your parents to tell you do this thing, do the other. Please. Try as much as possible to offer a helping hand in their family. Thank you so much for that wonderful, for that wonderful gain, for that thing that you have learned today. Okay. Um, marvelous. Marvelous, you are raising your hand. Tell us what you learned today. I learned that when we when we are asked to do something, we should do it immediately because if if, if we need to shade something or we need to or we need, <laughs> or the the sun will go and we cannot shade it again. We must leave it for spread. Thank you very very much. Thank you very 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 much, my dear marvelous. She learned that if you have something to do, you have agreed to do this thing, do it. As soon as you start it, finish it immediately. You started washing plates, finish the washing of plates immediately. You started to wash clothes, wash that clothes immediately, dry it so that the sun will, 
spread it so that the sun will dry it before the sun sets. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we, when you start a shop, you do what you finish it. Thank you so, so much for that wonderful lesson that you have learned today. I'm so happy. I'm happy with this class. I'm really impressed. Okay, Integrity, what do you have to tell us? You have said something today. Let Perfect say something. Perfect, tell us. I learned obedience. Obedience. Hey, you see, your words are always exact. When Perfect tells you she learned something, she goes straight to the point and then this is what I learned. She learned what? Obedience. What are these obedience? Orderliness as, as uh, being a, living an orderly life as a child of God. Orderliness as an important godly word character. When you are orderly, when you organize yourself, when your parents ask you to give you instructions and you hack into those instructions, that is what obedience. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you hack into that instruction, it is going to do you good. Praise the living God. Mm -hmm. So I'm so very much happy. All of you have learned great lessons. And I pray that you apply those lessons in your daily lives so that it shall be well with all of us, with our homes, the society, and the nation at large. Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray right now. Amen. We're going to pray. After praying, we we'll now watch the video that we have. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name, Jesus. There is no other name I know. That wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name, Jesus. There is no other name I know. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He's the Lord. Hallelujah. Every name shall bow. Every tongue. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Amen. You are risen from the dead. You are the Lord. Hallelujah. Every name shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, you are the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thou compassions fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Oh, 
Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Abba, Father, we, your children, have gathered before your presence. We have learned from you. We have eaten from your table. We have dined with you. Father, we are so happy for the benefit you have gotten today. We are so happy, oh God, for your words this day. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega. We worship you, oh God, for this day. We magnify your name, oh God, for what we have studied, oh God. God, your daintiness and important godly character. Father, we give you every praise. For we know that you have made done it for us. For we know that you have made us to get a lot of gain today. We, for we know that you have made us to go with a lot of benefits, oh God, that we are going to apply in our daily life and it is going to benefit us so much. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega, we thank you this day for feeding our spirit. We worship you, we glorify your name, oh God, for you are a divine God. King of kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega, we ask and we pray, oh God, that as we go back to our, to our different places of, of refuge, oh God, Father, as we, we ask and we pray, oh God, that you should be with us, abide with us. This world will never depart from us. May we apply it in our daily life, in the school, in the churches, in our home, in the community, anywhere we find ourselves. Father, oh God, this word of godliness as a godly character, Father, it will never depart from us in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Everlasting King of kings and Lord of the Lord, we honor you. We glorify your name for answers to prayers. Be thou worship, be thou adored, be thou exalted, be thou extolled, ancients of days, for this very wonderful opportunity we learn from you. Be thou praised forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Everlasting King of kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega, we continue to commit this very group onto your hand. The Children's Bible Club, Taragona. Father, oh God, have your way. May we grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength, spiritual strength, physical strength, numerical, numerical strength, and so on and so forth. Father, we are going to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Everlasting King of Kings and Lord of the Lord, the Alpha and Omega. We thank you for last week and other days that we have gathered. We thank you for this today. We thank you for other days that are yet to come that we are yet to gather. King of Kings and Lord of the Lord, we magnify your name as you bless us abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. We commit our parents on to hand whatsoever they are doing to end a living. Father, are they doing business? Are they working? Father, oh God, those that are working, Father, we pray for promotion. Those that are doing business, Father, bless us. King of Kings and Lord of the direct customer from every nook and cranny of wherever our business place is situated, oh God, to come and patronize us in the way that we are going to smite your own glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we worship and glorify your name. We honor you for answers to prayers. Our children, Father, we commit unto your hand. King of kings and both those that are here and those that are not here. Father, oh Lord, our academics is blessed. Our spiritual life is blessed. As we go to school, we sit in the classroom. As teacher says, Father, oh God, give us hearing ears, understanding minds to be able to get the learning experiences, internalize them, and be able to use them to be, uh, for the whole of the well-being of our whole self in the name of Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of Lord, we are doing it. We give you every every praise for answers to prayers. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. And lasting King of kings and Lord of Lord, as we are going right now, not out of your presence, but let your presence continue to go with us wherever we are. King of kings and Lord of Lord, we worship you. We, will, we hope that you bring us again together next week in more numbers, oh God, that we shall benefit from you again. Be that glorified, be that magnified for answers to prayers. For in Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, right now the video. Adam keeps his bedroom neat and tidy. However, it I'm Thank you. 